So that's what it's mainly used for. But there is a new use that I think is going to take over in the next few years, at least worldwide, if not here in America. America is still very much a pharmaceutical country, base country, and so we don't always turn to nutrition to help us. Um, but it has something in it, and I'll write it down below because it's like a $7 word, you know, it's really long, and I'll write it down below. But it has something in it that has been proven scientifically, even here in America, and I can even... I can even, our wind is picking up so our trees are howling overhead. Um, even here in America, some of the studies that are being done with it are showing that if you eat watercress three times a day, and there's other foods that have this in it, and again, it starts with a D, and like I said, it's a $7 word, and I'll write it down below. But it has this in it, that, and it helps prevent cancer. It helps keep your, helps your body fight off the irregularities that cause cancer. And like I said, three meals out of, of it a day, or three meals of it a week will help prevent cancer. And that's where it's most effective is in cancer prevention. But it is also shown that eating a lot of it after you get cancer, and most cancers do seem to respond to it, um, will help fight the cancer off. The other thing is, especially here in the winter time, if I'm going to make a salve, a lot of time I'll come down and gather up a little uh, a salve for skin healing. Um, I will come down and gather up a little watercress and in the last 20 minutes or so of the making it, if I'm doing it by heat extraction, I'll throw in a handful of watercress. If I'm doing it by cold extraction, meaning I'm just uh, putting something in oil, letting it set there in a few weeks till the oil absorbs the um, the uh, vitamins or the, the healing properties out of the sorry, well, the crows are talking and I'm listening to them. You guys can't hear it, but way off in the distance crows are talking and they're definitely saying canine so we've either got a wolf or a coyote moving off in the distance but anyway let's jump come back to this uh, if, if I'm making a skin totally totally lost track of where I'm going so I'm making a skin um, something that's healing for the skin maybe a skin break or a rash or something like that um, and if I'm making a cold infusion I put whatever the whatever the material is into oil and I let it sit for a very long time uh, you know a couple days to a couple weeks and then if I'm making a hot infusion it can take you know maybe 8 to 12 hours 4 to 12 hours even sometimes and that's where you put it over a very low flame on your stove and you extract the uh, the medicinal properties out of it that way and um, the when I'm doing this, at the last minute, meaning in the last half an hour, 20 minutes of a heat extraction to the last maybe 24 to 12 hours of a cold extraction, I'll throw a handful of uh, watercress into it and that will put a lot of vitamins and minerals, a lot of nourishment for your skin, which can help your skin heal itself better because that's what most medicines should be. The medicines are not doing the healing, they're boosting your body's immunity to do it. Um, so I'm going to, uh, well, and then, uh, sorry, so uh, it's very good for salves. And then one other thing that I was going to put in, watercress is the hidden ingredient in V8. It's one of the eight juice, or eight original ingredients to V8 juice. V8 juice did not used to be just something people drank. It was a healing tonic that people took. And um, there were eight ingredients that made it a healing tonic. It was not just meant to be drank cold. You could drink it cold in the hot heat of summer, but you also could heat it up and use it as a nourishing soup, and watercress was part of that nourishment. It was probably the most nourishing part of it, uh, with the other things adding their own unique um, unique part of the um, soup.
unique healing properties to it, but watercress was probably the nourishing part of it. But I'm going to take you over here. I'm, I've got myself on the rocks here, and while I can wade through it, I hate messing around with it because not only this this water comes up warm, and that means I'm going to have frogs. I have frogs here all winter long that come out, but I don't see any because if I did, I would have showed you. Um, okay, let me get over. <laughs> These boots, I, I brought my wading boots, and the, you can see why here. This is springs, while the main part of the spring is right here bubbling up, there's also seepage on the side here, and again, this is coming up very warm. So when you step here, you can see the water comes right up around your boots, which is why I'm wearing big old sloppy boots like this. These boots are great for swamping and marshing. What they're not good for is walking. <laughs> They, they make your feet feel like yeah, you're walking like like uh, Frankenstein's monster. So I'm going to show you this. I'm going to pause you for a minute while I take my glove off, and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is watercress in the winter. In the summertime, it can get more out of the water. As you can see, some of this is a lighter color, and that's stuff that's probably gotten freezer burned. Let me get down to it. That stuff that's probably gotten a little bit more freezer burned, uh, freeze burned because it's out of the water, so it got cold. Watercress has, um, it does have stems like this, you can see, and when it's in the summertime, they will grow up, probably come out of the water a good four or five inches, but the stems have no fiber to them. So uh, they don't have any strength. They're not going to stand upright. They're going to be kind of more creepy on the ground. That's creeping on the ground. And uh, the stems, they break really easy. The stems themselves can be used as a poultice, like if you just grab a handful of this and crush it, and you've got a wound and you're out here in the, in the woods. It has mild antimicrobials and it also is nourishing, so you can stick it on your wound if you've got a clean water source. The other thing is the stems grow their own little rootlets. Um, these are where they can get, you can see a big chunk of them here. This is where they're literally taking the nutrients out of the water itself. And it also, of course, is in the ground and the leaves are gathering it out of the air. And the leaves are somewhat heart-shaped. they not quite as much as like the violet, but they have kind of, they're rounded with the flat end being where the uh, stem attaches. And they will go up and down the leaves. And to tell you that they're opposite, or uh, they are opposite, but they're more clump-like. They all come off at the same time. Best way to tell, and this is not the way you tell people to do things, but the best way to tell watercress is to take a bite chew it for a second and it's going to have it's going to start off tasting green and the more you chew it the more peppery flavor it's going to be this is a member of the mustard family so it's going to have that mustardy peppery taste oh my god i love that flavor <laughs> and uh if you've ever eaten watercress you'll know exactly what i'm talking about but that's the easiest way to uh pick it out is look for those little rootlets growing into the uh into the water itself it has stems that have no fibers to them, so they lay flat. They may come out of the water a little bit in the summertime, um, but they're... Oh God, sorry, i got to have another bite. Um, they come out of the water a little bit in the summertime, but they're not... Um, and they're never going to get tall. They're never going to grow straight up. And... Uh, but they can get very long. This whole thing in the summertime will be covered with watercress. That up there will be all covered with watercress. Um, the watercress will even come over the spillway there if that gets going. Uh, if we have a wet year, it'll come all the way down. So this whole thing will be covered with watercress. Oh my God, these are so good. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so they're very easy to tell um, what it looks like. And again, meandering in a, in a freshwater stream or grow your own or buy it from the store. It's an amazing healing plant that um, that just, it, it's first of all, just the greenness of it in the wintertime is, you can feel the green in your mouth, you can taste it, and when you eat it, you feel better. Um, it kind of makes your mood go up. Uh, if, if you're kind of a little bit depressed and you're looking and everything's gray and white and brown and everything and then you put this green into your body there's something about green eating green in the wintertime that just boosts your morale um, anyway uh, 
This is watercress. I'm going to gather myself up some of this and go home and eat. I do this pretty much every day. It's a good way to lose weight because it's a nice walk. You can see my little trail. i got to walk all the way back through the woods to get back to the house. Um, I do it especially during maple season. Um, I will come down here and gather a little bit of this up and take it up and eat it during the maple. Uh, I'll even put a little maple syrup on it. Ah, I love that. <laughs> it sounds weird, but I do. And um, But it's a it's also very nutritious, and it's just fun to walk out here and gather it. So anyway, that's it. This is, this is watercress, our winter green here in Wisconsin.